I, I do apologize. I, I said to check Angel, and I never post anything to Angel. Um, I, uh, I slept almost all day that day. I was, I was up much of the night and wasn't feeling well, and, and I slept almost all day. I was up, I think, for an hour here, an hour there. So I did not uh, post anything to Angel. Well, my plan is today is to, since you were robbed out of a work day, my plan is to spend some time talking about the assignment, sort of give pointers and, uh, and so on. And some of the time uh, will be like work time. And then Thursday will be a, a work day. Um, I also want to talk about the next phase of this um, assignment. Um, cards. At some point, you're going to want to get card images. There are card images online, fortunately. So you don't have to go and scan your deck of 52 cards um, if you don't want to. But let's talk about that for a second. <clears throat> I think the way that you name the card files is going to be important. Okay. What you don't want, I don't think, is a case statement with 52 options on it to pick which card you want based on some value. Okay. You don't want a series of 52 if statements. Regardless of what you how you do it, you don't want 52 of them. All right. What would be a reasonable way to organize and name the card images? Yes. Part of the name for any card is the same as the Okay, so one possible way to name them would be to have the suit and then a value. So like the three of spades could be spade dash three or spade three. The ace of hearts could be hearts dash 13 or hearts dash ace. What would be another way to do this? You could also separate into folders where you have an ace folder, a or an ace folder, a hearts folder, a spades folder, a clubs folder, and so on. So there's a couple ways that you could you could uh, do that. And uh, uh, but but the point is is the organization of this is is going to be important because you don't want that. Let's say and let's let's think ahead a bit. This isn't a requirement, and I don't think I would make it a requirement. But what if we let the user choose the style of deck that they have? How would we accommodate that? And what might be a way to accommodate that? Use a menu to allow them to select it, definitely. Once they select it, how would you differentiate between the different image files? Yeah, I'd probably have a folder for each theme. So yeah, and, and, and that's a good point. For those of you that are struggling a little bit with this, look at that flag game to, um, to do that. Um, so the, the point is, I guess I want to say, is when you do cards, you know, you can download the card, um, but you want to, um, you know, you want, you want some intelligence in your naming scheme. You want to think that through. So it's easy to take the card and map it into the image that you want. There's another image that you're going to need besides a card. What image is that? The back of the card. All right. 
because remember the dealer gets one card down and one card up. All right. You you have to show the two cards to so that the, so that you as a player can play. But the dealer will show a card down and a card up. All right. So you also need a back of that. And fortunately, at least in the files that I found, um, there was um, it was included in the in the uh, files um, a picture of the card back. They even had they even to make it even easier they even had I think a card back horizontal and a card back vertical so you didn't even have to worry about rotating it the image if you didn't want. They also had part of a card back if you wanted to be fancy and like overlay the images you know kind of like this. Like show the nine of hearts and then show the image like that next to it. Pardon me? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be better to show like this. I remember those today. I'm like, you know, we were talking about one of the deck of cards. I thought I'd keep those with me. Yeah, to show it like this. The image I had even had two of them even had the, the edge of the card so you could if you wanted to show the dealer's hand do it like that. If you are at the point where that is your biggest issue in your program then I would suggest you know to go outside and enjoy the weather and take a walk or something because you probably um, probably have uh, done, uh, done enough, done well enough on it. All right. Let me show you what I have so far and let me talk a little bit about it and talk a little bit of how it's different. I'm pretty happy with what I have done so far, but I'm not completely happy. I'm 99% happy with what I have, so I'm not happy. So what I have so far is this. Oops. I'm actually showing the card images and you see both of them and you see the dealers um, one face down the other face up. I have 98 some things. I started with 100 so if I win I go up one if I lose I go down one. I haven't made it where you could vary the bet at all. That would be another option pretty easily accomplished. I have my hit and stay button and if I take a, should I take a hit on 14? Pardon me? Yeah. I'll take a hit on 14. And I'm busted. All right. Let me, let me zoom in on this. All right. So another game. Two jacks. I'm going to stay and the player wins. They get a 19. Another game. I have 15 and the dealer has an A showing. <laughs> you know, every, every time you say this, I'm going to increase the requirements, but not for every student, just for a randomly selected student. All right, we'll get into the gambling sort of thing. All right, I will, uh, I'll take a hit. Okay, I now have 18. Let me stay. Yeah, dealer wins. All right, I will take a hit. Stay. And I won. Is that counter up there the number of games you've won? Well, kind of. I started at 100, and then I've incremented and decremented. So I'm actually, I'm down two now. Uh, so it's like you're betting. It's like I'm betting one unit per, per game. All right, and a um, couple things to notice. All right, let's notice what, let's talk about what the layout for this would look like. Now, again, keep in mind, and it's funny, I kind of went round and round with a student earlier today, um, was making a suggestion on how to troubleshooting something, and he didn't seem to accept my suggestion. Hey, you're entitled to do it your way if you want. 
All right, I'm not going to sit and argue with you and I'm going to hold a gun at anyone's head and, and make them do it a certain way. But, there's some things that seem to sort of make sense. And as a result, since I've gone through this, I want to give some tip-offs to you folks. Let me talk about how I did this. And again, you can, your mileage may vary. You may choose to do it another way. I have, first of all, a text area. for essentially the score. Oh, okay. So text area for the score, and it start out at 100. I then have a linear layout. Why? Because I noticed once I switched to actual cards, my table layout that I was expanding was going to be like really long as I was extend, extending it vertically. And so if I took several hits, my cards would go off the screen or the dealer's cards would go off the screen. So I thought it would be better to orient the cards horizontally. So what I have effectively, if I want to sketch my layout, this is the player's hand. This is the dealer's hand. I think I have a little text box here that says who won the last game. And I have my three buttons. I have linear layout as my main layout, which is oriented vertically. And my linear layout consists of a text, a second linear layout, another text, another linear layout, and then I think another linear layout still to put the orient the, the buttons horizontally. So remember, you can nest these linear layouts inside of each other. So the overall page is stacked this way. First view, second view, third view, fourth view, fifth view. And the first view is a text. The second view itself is a linear layout that has a horizontal orientation. So I can get the cards going horizontally. Then I have a text. Then I have another horizontal and another horizontal. The nice thing is is that these views are all views. All right? That, that kind of doesn't kind of doesn't make sense or is self-explanatory or whatever. But what I'm saying is it was very easy for me to switch from a table to this horizontal layout because I can still add a view to, any other, to, to another view. So I can add a view to the table, or I can add a view to the horizontal layout. And it works just about the same. So keep in mind that each of these are views, and therefore the logic that we saw in the Twitter application added to the table view, it sort of made sense to make a table in that case, all right, because we wanted nice little rows and columns. We wanted to, um, or, or in this case, it makes sense not really to use a table view. If you've done with a table view so far, don't worry about it. That's something that we can easily, you can easily go back and, and change later on, especially if you're not doing it with cards. The first pass was not to have, you do not necessarily need to have card images. All right. Yes. Are you storing your images in the assets folder or do you have images for each size of um... I have them in the assets folder. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't go to that. I'm not sure if that was a concern. No. No. Okay. no. We don't need to worry about the different sizes for that. Okay. Um, we could, in our layout, make the image a certain number of um, density independent pixels. So we can make our image a certain density and that would do some adjustment. Of course, if it got too big, then you'd get distortion. But, you know, we, we could at least make it resize a little bit so on a real small screen it wasn't taking up the whole thing. All right, we could do that. Um, that reminded me of something with this.
Oh, I'm also not, I'm also keeping the cards out of the deck. So in other words, until there's, most of them are gone, then I go and re reshuffle the deck. So um, I shouldn't get, now I haven't tested this thoroughly, but I shouldn't get like the ace of spades in two hands in a row. All right. So I did, I did make that adjustment as well. Oh, the other thing, the, the individual card GUI. I started out having an XML file that had two labels in it that I filled in with the name and the suit. I changed that to XML to have one image view that I'm going to set the image of that image view to that. Again, here's the nice thing. The way this works, your logic isn't going to change that much. All right? You're still going to inflate this XML file. You're still going to grab a reference to those views. In this case, you have two views to grab the reference to. In this case, you have one view to grab a reference of. And then you're going to set it. In one case, you're going to set it to the name of the image. In the other case, you're going to set it to the, um, to the um, um, image, um, however you are naming, whatever naming convention you're using for the image. One thing I would say is I don't have in the final version, because I got confident, I would put, in addition to these things, I would put a running total of your hand and a running total of the dealer's hand up there until you're sure that that's working. All right, that will help you out in testing and debugging this. That way you can see if it's correct or not. Now, I haven't posted the official next assignment, but you know the official next assignment is to continue working on it. I think the first one was just to deal and keep track. Um, we'll, I'll post the official assignment, but the next assignment is just is to take it further, to make it where you are actually playing a hand of blackjack and showing the results um, if, if you've won or not. Um, and then I don't know if we'll cut it there or if we'll go another week. We'll see how everyone is doing with that and what their opinions are. I do want to talk about one other thing, though, before I finish my portion of today's class and, and go on to um, your work time. And that is the notion of refactoring. Okay? There's different schools of thought about the best way to program. All right? Um... I almost take the approach in programming that I would take if I was writing a term paper. All right? You plan it, right? You plan a term paper. You sit down and you write an outline. That would be analogous to your design. All right? That's the plan that you're going to have. Now, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to always follow the plan precisely. If you get a better idea part of the way through, then you can change the plan. But it's better to start out with a plan than no plan at all and just, just winging it. So you have a plan to go under. You take your first shot. Your first shot could be analogous to like a rough draft. All right? The rewriting portion of this really gets into rewriting your code or sometimes called refactoring. Refactoring, the idea is, is to take your code and change it from something that works to something that is, works and is good code. All right? What sort of things are you going to look at when you refactor? In other words, how are you going to decide if I have code and it works, like my code works, I'm reasonably happy with how it is, how would I decide what parts of it I'm going to redo? All right, number one is you look for redundancy. Look for code that is the same or is awfully close to being the same. I know I have one instance of that. Why didn't I correct it that minute that I found it? Maybe I should have. 
But the way I was working that day, I wanted to get it in, get it done, and then take a step back and make improvements to it. So that's how stylistically I code. All right. There's other people that might say, no, nope, try to get it perfect the first time. I prefer to sort of spiral in on perfection as opposed to shooting for it with a bullseye the first time. So I have a case of I have two blocks of code that are almost identical. And I know that I'm going to have to rewrite those. All right. Now it's important that you do follow through and go back and rewrite those. All right. So that would be one thing though. Redundancy. Anytime you have like some kind of duplication of code to go and do it. What would be another case of something that you would want to refactor for? Long methods. Long methods. All right. If, you're, if your functions are too long, what is too long for a method? Yeah, that and that's a pretty common one. That if it, it yeah, that if if your if your method, if you can't get your head around the whole method, and if you can't visually get your eyes around it, the thought is you can't get your head around it. All right, so that is actually a good rule of thumb. So if your methods are too long, you could consider breaking them down into separate methods. So that that is that's a good one. One thing I will say about refactoring is a lot of times the function name will give you a hint that it needs to be refactored. What do I mean by that? If, I, if my function name is do calculation A and do calculation B, there's an and in that, that function is really doing two things. You might be better off making two functions, do calculation A, do calculation B. So, right. Exactly. That's that's a that's a uh, that's a good. How do I want to say lay lay per? Well, I guess we're not lay people, but that's a good uh, um, just verbal example of of that principle. If you look at it, if it if it if it's doing more than its one function, um, what would be another thing that you would possibly refactor? You could always do something like pretty up the interface, make the interface more usable, and that. I, I guess that's refactoring, but. Okay, Poss possibly log more logically organizing it, if, if that's the case. Okay. Um, you can look for more efficient ways to write code, even if it does work, and even, even uh, if that, and that's a good example of one case for that. It is oftentimes good to have someone else look at it and do a code review from that. Um, what's another way that you could refactor, another thing that you, you might do? And again, you might not consider this refactoring, but I would say error handling. A lot of people don't necessarily do adequate error handling or they leave that go or whatever. So I would, I would check the error handling and make it uh, fault tolerant. Well-named variables, readable code in general. Um, comments, um, variables that really tell you something. In fact, I, I did that and I probably could do that even further. I had like I, I, I forget, but I had, I had like four variables that were like almost the same thing. And the minute that I wrote it, I knew what those went, meant, but the minute I go to the bathroom and come back, I'm going to forget. All right, so making the code more readable is a good example. One other thing I would say that's sort of a flavor of some of the things is, and this is probably my biggest offense in this example, is 
making sure you really have a, a good separation of user interface and business rule stuff. Um, some of my rules creeped into my UI. All right, and I got it to work because I wanted it to work, but I recognized as I was doing it that there's probably better ways to do that to, to uh, more fully adhere to the, to the uh, good object-oriented principles and a good separation between the UI and the business rules. So my guess is, and again, I'll, I'll formalize the assignments uh, over the next couple days. Um, but your design was due last Thursday. I wasn't here, so we can extend that if anyone has design questions. Um, I want to keep the, the first pass of the program due this coming Thursday. But again, you know me, I'm flexible about that. If you don't have that, we can, we can talk about that. We'll have another iteration to finish up the programming of one game. Then we might very well have a refactor, add bells and whistles, where those of you who watched the demonstration and didn't have really any, any comments will simply have to like, make it look better and all that. But those of you that wanted insurance and to double down and to, and, and to, to have uh, in-app in purchases where I could purchase more credits, and all those things, um, you know, might consider putting some of those in there. That person will become a better Android developer if, if he or she survives the class. I do, by the way, I may have an opportunity for someone, um, I know someone is interested in getting a student to help them with an Android project. So as I get more details, I will. Uh, bring that to your attention. Um, person just talked talked it over with me, and that as as a as a professor here, we get a lot of these things, and and um, I you know I, I generally try to pass them on either to directly to the students or to career services and let them work with them. Um, I'm not really supposed to recommend a single student because I could recommend you know, based on biases or whatever. But I can announce it to the entire class and whoever's interested can talk with a person and they can figure out on their own if they want to be involved in it. Questions? Over anything I talked about or anything over the app? What was, oh, okay, shoot, I forgot about something. I have that nagging feeling I forgot something. Well, if it comes to me, I'll, I'll let you know. All right, the remainder of class today will be a work time, and then class Thursday will be a work time. In the meantime, I will post, before next time, I will post the formal next couple of assignments concerning this. Yes? I think it's next week. I think... Uh, I think that's next week, if I, if I remember right. If I remember right, yeah. The quizzes are easy. You should be encouraging the quizzes. The quizzes are more or less me effectively checking your pulse to make sure that you have showed up and have done anything concerning uh, this class. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was challenging, and some people want to take the easy way out instead of actually learning the material and working through it. That's what was wrong with it. <laughs> All right, so work time. I'm going to close the mic. In fact, I probably should edit out the last five minutes anyhow, but... Oh, well. <laughs>